So it's been a couple weeks since uh, we've gotten the solar panels installed up on the roof of the of the adventure here, or Winnebago, and I thought I'd get you caught up on some of the other things that we've been doing in the meantime. It's just been a lot of uh, smaller projects, a lot of cleaning, a lot of resealing and inspecting and replacing some some much needed things inside and outside. So I thought I'd just spend a little time and walk through some of those things I've been looking at, some of the issues that we're encountering. And I think I left you uh, last time up on the roof, so let's head up there and I'll show you what's going on. So before we get started, I just want to mention that if you are just join us for the first time and you're wondering what the heck is going on here. Uh, we picked up a, a used a 2003 Winnebago Adventure Class A motorhome and it's a 34 foot uh, Class A and it's in pretty good shape but uh, we've been doing a lot of updating and it needs a bit of cleanup and some things replaced. You know it's an 18 year old coach so uh, we've been working to get it ready for the road and uh, one of the big things we're doing is to take it completely off grid because that's how we roll we pretty much uh, dry camp uh, almost 100 percent of the time when we're out on the road so you know you can see uh, we installed some solar panels in that last video and recently i also just replaced some of these vent covers i used to have some big old uh, vent covers that were hanging over where the solar panel was so these take up less space work just fine it's the same kind we have on our uh, class c but most of the time spent up here on the roof is has been inspection of all the seals for all the openings checking all the die core make sure nothing's cracked and really been spending a lot of time on the on the front cap of the of the roof here and on the on the end cap and just sealing up all of the uh, things that aren't sealed or need extra extra attention. Now you might remember that I removed the satellite dish that was here. Now I'm leaving the base here because I may want to attach the satellite dish at some point. What was left over was this coax cable and this control cable. So what I did is I just installed this little this little box here covered with water right now. It's been raining all the time. But I just wanted a nice place to, to keep the, the extra cable so it's not just sitting here zip tied on the roof. Uh, so you can just open this up, bring the cable out this hole here and hook it up next time uh, we need to hook it up. Now I also uh, resealed the entire front cap a seam and I did this a while back you know, using some ProFlex and I took out a lot of the old sealant and I put down new sealant and that's been holding really really well but one of the things that i did also just for some added protection is to put down some roof sealing tape over this entire seam and i, I ended up actually using the uh this gorilla tape stuff instead of uh eternabon i've seen a lot of these eternabon like uh tapes come out recently basically look just like eternabon so you can get them at uh Home Depot and Lowe's sometimes now and they come in these 10 foot strips but I've only seen them in the wide like four inch uh, format so that works really good for doing these large seams like this and yeah I feel really good about just leaving these here so it uh, just creates an extra level of protection for that front seam and I also did the same thing on the rear uh, seam uh, for the rear cap you can see here where I sealed up the uh, the front cap here with some of that uh, white ProFlex. And I've also been working on resealing the entire radius here along the rain gutter as it goes all the way from front to back. Now that's a bit of a job because I got to clean it all out and then uh, really pump a lot of the ProFlex in there. I'm still uh, working on that. I haven't completely wrap that up yet. I ran out of some ProFlex so I'm waiting for some more to come. You know I'll get that wrapped up uh, when it shows up. And I'm doing that on both sides here. Here's the uh, passenger side also trying to get that whole radius sealed up all the way from front to back. Now I have to give a little a shout out to the YouTube channel AZ Expert because he does a lot of roof work on Winnebago's specifically and I've learned a ton about what I need to do to maintain 
uh, the roof here on the Winnebago. He's always repairing damaged roofs on these rigs and uh, one of the things is uh, that he recommends is that you just reseal that whole that whole radius all the way down. Luckily uh, this roof is in pretty good shape and I just need to kind of maintain it and make sure it stays in good shape. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I'm still pretty happy with, uh, with the solar panel mount here. Uh, it's really strong and to answer some of the questions that I know have come up on that particular video, I do plan on lifting this up a little bit and probably redoing some of these brackets and lifting those probably about a half or three quarters of an inch. And I am working on uh, creating some kind of a baffle here for the front and probably the side to help deflect some of that wind up. So as I lift it, it's going to create more potential for, uh, for lift. So I want to uh, mitigate that possibility and, and build something that looks nice and, and is functional. So look for that coming up in the future. Now I still need to remove this old uh, solar panel here and build some sort of box here to kind of collect a lot of the cables that I'm going to have running down through the refrigerator vent, but just haven't done it yet. Waiting for some better weather <laughs> so I can tear this off and reseal it. Now in addition to the roof, I want to make sure that all the window seals are in great shape and aren't aged or cracking or leaking and all that stuff. So I've been removing a lot of the old sealant from all the windows and reapplying some new sealant around the top and the sides. And I'm just kind of working my way around. Not quite done yet. I've been trying to get this done in between rain and uh, it's getting there. So I'm almost done. Now where this RV was parked uh, previously, this side faced uh, the sun. So uh, you'll see a lot of uh, a lot of oxidation on this side. I've done my best to clean a lot of that up and recently just really scrubbed this and waxed this whole side of the RV and it looks a little bit better. But there's a few of these decals like this W here that need to be replaced. And luckily the previous owner actually has uh, some of these replacement decals that he ordered from Winnebago some time ago. Just never got around to, uh, to putting them on. So, so this one, there's I think this one and there's a couple more on the side. So if I get around to it, I'll probably be uh, removing these old decals and replacing them with some new ones. I'll show you the other side, which was in the shade for most of the time, and it looks <laughs> significantly different. This looks almost new. So if you can, if you're gonna be sitting for a while, put a cover on the RV or keep it in the shade, it'll make a big difference. Now during the last couple days I've been spending a lot of time uh, just looking at and inspecting the heaters. Now this is the, the propane heater here in the back and it's, all, it's ducted all the way through the, the floor down the center of the RV. And uh, I've been cleaning all of those ducts out, really reaching in there and getting all kinds of dust and, and stuff out of that uh, entire duct and figuring out where they go. But I also took this whole thing off and exposed the back of the heater and uh, really dug around there and cleaned out the inside. Because one thing I realized is that a lot of the intake for the air that's flowing through this heater is actually flowing through this cavity uh, from the back bedroom. And you know any dust and stuff in there is just going to get blown back through the system. So I've been spending a bit of time uh, inspecting it and making sure that everything is cleaned out. Now same thing with the, with the heat pump. This is our basement heat pump on the bottom of the RV here in the back and it's got two coils. It's got this outer one which is what the condenser coil, compressor coil. <laughs> I'm not an HVAC person but uh, I've been cleaning out the coils here with some coil cleaner and doing the same thing with the, uh, the evaporator coil on the inside which is a little far under the bed but it's accessible so I was able to get in there and and do a light vacuuming on there because it was really, really dusty. And then took some coil cleaner to, to that coil as well. And then was able to rinse it out with, uh, with a little weed sprayer. And any water that gets in there just drips out the bottom here. So not a big deal. And it's nice having those nice and clean uh, so they run a lot more efficiently and don't cause 
any future problems. I will say that so far this uh, heat pump has been working really, really well. It, it heats really well and it cools really well. So I hope it stays that way for a long time. Now, one thing I haven't done yet is to is to replace the springs on the on the hydraulic jacks. I have tested them; they work just fine. Uh, but the springs need to be replaced. I just ordered some the other day, so I'm waiting for them to show up and I'll get those swapped out. Now, something I noticed back here, now this is my water tank, but there's also uh, the, the hydraulic component for the main slide out. There's another one on the other side of the stairs. But a while back I noticed that there was uh, some hydraulic fluid pooling up underneath there. You can see now where I have a paper towel, but it was a simple fix to uh, to just tighten down some of those fittings there, and that seemed to fix the leak. But I don't know how long it had been leaking, and uh, there was a bit of a hydraulic fluid sprayed underneath the coach here. So I uh, just yesterday was down crawling under there and just got some engine that purple stuff, degreaser stuff, and sprayed it all up in there and then washed it all down and it seemed to clean up a lot of that stuff. It's all good to go because uh, I've been spending a lot of time, as you might remember, in this uh, compartment and this is where I'm going to put uh, all the batteries and inverter and, and that stuff is going to go in here and I'll reinforce it and, and this is going to be a great spot. Hear that noise? So one thing I noticed is that this water pump is just running constantly. Even though it's not pumping any water out, there don't appear to be any leaks or anything like that, but maybe there is some, some leak in a line somewhere. But uh, this is something that I need to address because I don't want this running all the time. Uh, maybe it's a water pressure sensor in here is bad. Uh, so I need to fix this because it draws about half an amp just sitting here running, which is uh, not what I want. I know the previous owner probably didn't use the water pump all that much. They're primarily on uh, city water. Now for us, we're never on city water hookups, so we are always running on our water pump. Even during those times when we were actually at, a, at an RV park, we don't use it. We just fill up our tank and then we run primarily off of our water pump. So we need a good one. <laughs> I do have a spare water pump that um, I can swap out and I'll probably do that. I hope it's not a leak in the system somewhere, uh, but I'll figure it out. So let's head inside now. I'll show you what's uh, been going on in there. Well, most of the effort here on the inside of the coach has involved a lot of cleaning. You know, there's a lot of fabric and and just you know kitchen use and stuff like that and just you know the dash and and just the whole all the surfaces need to be deep cleaned so that's what we've been spending a lot of time doing and just kind of giving it a nice fresh look and uh, remove any lingering odors that may have been in specific places uh, been really deep cleaning the the waste tanks so they're all nice and fresh now i don't like waste tanks that smell like waste tanks so you know we have a composting toilet so i'll show you that i'm in the process of hooking that up as well in addition to all the cleaning of the the carpet and all the surfaces and fabrics I've also uh, replaced a few things and been updating things slowly. Uh, one of them has been uh, the lights. So I've replaced all the bulbs with, uh, with LED bulbs and I found a couple bulbs that worked really, really well. And let me show you. So first of all, we decided to keep all of these, uh, these little directional lights and we're just gonna repaint the, the brass. We're gonna paint them kind of a, a bronze color. But we decided to keep them. But what I did is uh, replaced all the bulbs and I found the perfect replacement bulb. It's in this little box here. Ordered a bunch of them, but they look just like the original, but it's an LED bulb and it just pops right inside here. We got this bayonet fitting, but it's an LED and it, oh, okay, sorry. 
can't film and do this at the same time. There we go. So yeah, nice little soft white replacement bulb. So those have worked out really well. Got all those swapped out. And for some of the other fixtures, I got these other little replacement bulbs. These came in a pack of six, but it's tiny. Some of the other uh, replacements that I've used in the past have been a little bigger. So here's the replacement LED bulb. So yeah, it works great in these type of fixtures so you don't have to get new stuff. So yeah, I can just touch it, it's not hot. It's just these little replacement LED bulbs. Just swap out the old ones for the new ones and you're using one tenth the electricity. One of those in the shower, there. Now I've also found LED replacements for these uh, vanity lights. Now we plan on either replacing this fixture here or I don't know, at least uh, painting a different color. It's still that brassy color, but I did have some of these uh, LED replacement bulbs for these that I had some spares because it's the same kind of thing we have in the Class C. But yeah, we're looking for something a little more low profile um, to replace that. So I even found an LED replacement for this little, uh, this little fuse bulb light here. That's for the tied to the porch light. And yeah, so it's LED and uh, comes in various colors. So I got a amber one, which you see here. I also got red and, uh, and blue. <laughs> so we can switch them out, figure out which one works best for us. There's also one in the back by the bedroom. Another bulb, or two bulbs actually, that we replaced in the microwave here. See, there's two lights, there's a high and a low. Now what those are typically are these, uh, these halogen uh, bulbs that get super, super hot. In fact, while we're cleaning the microwave, we just realized how hot the microwave was getting just with these lights on. So I found some replacements for those as well. These are LEDs and they fit and work just fine. So here's the original and the replacement bulb. Works just fine and uh, we'll definitely use much less electricity here in the microwave. Well, finally on the lighting side, I'm not gonna bother getting replacement bulbs and replace the ballast and all that stuff for these fluorescent lights. Instead, I just picked up these LED replacements that uh, I'll just swap those right out. And I've already fitted them and they work just fine. I just haven't installed them yet, but they work good. And I think they also have a little dimmer on the side that should also work out pretty well so yeah just take these off and plop these on and then we'll be all led'd out here inside now another really easy update was to change out the hardware here on the cabinets you know we had these uh brassy gold looking handles on everything and we found these nice bronze uh, hardware handles at Lowe's actually and bought a bunch of them and I think they look really really well so Melissa swapped all of these out uh, throughout the entire RV instead of swapping out the hinges here I'm just gonna go ahead and remove them and and paint them a similar color and that uh, should be good call it done <laughs> now you may have noticed also that uh, got rid of the coffee pot that was here uh, we'll probably just leave it like this for now. There's a little outlet up back here. So maybe lower this at some point, lower the shelf or build a little uh, a little charging station or something here. So that'll work out really well. But these little uh, spindly pieces up here also had this strip of kind of brassy trim up there. We wanted to get rid of that. It's just an easy thing to just pry those out and get rid of them. and. It just looks much better without it. Now, one thing I did uncover here in the uh, the passenger seat, right next to the passenger seat, was a little bit of water damage here by the the window. So at one point, it looks like the the window had been leaking, and uh, I've resealed this entire window, so I know it's totally fixed. Uh, there should be no leaking now. But there's some residual water damage here in the panel. You know, we plan on uh, repainting this whole thing anyway. You can see some of this uh, this kind of stickery laminate stuff is is coming up too. So I'll 
fix that and replace these panels and it doesn't seem to go back very far so I should be able to just uh, cut new pieces and get those uh, reattached to the wall and it looks like uh, behind it everything's fine it's just that uh, surface paneling that needs to be replaced now another ongoing project has been to to do something about this ceiling this material in the ceiling you notice over time you know it uh, it just starts to fall apart and you just rub your hand across it and you can just see it's like snow <laughs> coming off of the ceiling. So what I've uh, been doing is is just to, to take the vacuum cleaner to it. So I've removed most of the, uh, you know, the stuff that I can suck up with the vacuum cleaner. And then what I'm doing is is actually treating the rest of it with just some, uh, some Scotchgard <laughs> carpet and rug cleaner and just spraying it down there and, and sealing that up a little bit more. And so far I've noticed that it's made a big improvement and it'll help hopefully keep it from, you know, collecting any, I don't know, odors and other things in there in the future. So I've done part of the, the back by the bathroom so far and I'll wrap up the rest of it uh, in the next couple days. Now, obviously you can tell we haven't done anything about the TVs just yet, but I do have a plan <laughs> that's formulating. I do have a replacement TV. It's sitting right over there. So I've been using it just to position it around to figure out where we actually want a TV because we sit there, we want to watch TV. We actually would want the TV like where I'm standing over here instead of up there. But at other times we might want it up there. So one idea that we're toying with is maybe having two TVs. One that is more located in this area, but still having something up there in case we're moving around and we just want the TV on up there. So that's kind of a tentative uh, thought that's that's brewing, uh, but we're not going to act on it just yet. I'll probably get something temporary in place until we can use it more and uh, really figure out uh, what our plan is. Now there isn't a whole lot going on back here in the bedroom area. Uh, we are going to be doing the same updates with the with those lights back there and removing those big old scary haunted mansion lights. And <laughs> so there's just a little hole in the wall, so those will be easy to patch up. But there's also 12 volt power there in case I ever need it, so that's good to know. Uh, but yeah, not a whole lot going on here. We're going to probably uh, remove the headboard, build a new headboard, and uh, and then yeah, just kind of taking this one in stride, definitely doing something with the window treatments in here. And I've also been working in the, the bathroom, the toilet area to, to remove the old toilet and getting it set up for our composting toilet. So let me show you. Oh yeah, we got new door hardware too. What do you think of that? It looks nice, huh? So you can see I've already removed the, uh, the panel here that exposes, you know, a bunch of wiring my light switch and also the vent tube for the black tank because that's what I'm going to use to tap into to vent out uh, the uh, the composting toilet. I'm just waiting for uh, a fan and a fan enclosure from from the airhead composting toilet folks. Now I do have this piece already ready to go. Nice thing it's a uh, it's rubber. This is going to be a nice easy fit uh, for this one and a half inch pipe and I'll be able to tie right into it here. Oops, actually it's going to go this way. So, the, so any of the venting for the composting toilet goes up through the roof and uh, that's how I have the, the Class C plumbed out and it works really really well. So that's next on the agenda as soon as I get that fan and everything. I'm going to finish that up and then toilet will be ready to go. I also capped off the water line that was coming in here that was for the original toilet and I just put a valve on it instead so I can just keep it shut off. If I ever needed to, I can easily just plop the old toilet back in, set it in place, bolt it down, hook up the water and we're good to go. So I'll really be digging into the electrical system coming up next. I've got all the equipment I need to, to install a new inverter and we've got batteries going in and, and all the connecting stuff. and start uh, piecing together the components needed for the solar. So that'll be uh, kind of some big stuff I'll, I'll share with you probably coming up in a week or so. And also uh, some other projects. I know Melissa uh, has signed up to, to, to redo the front blinds here that cover 
the cab area, we like more of a blackout kind of feel to that instead of this white shade that you can kind of still see things from the outside. So she's going to figure out how to use that thing as a template, the existing one, and then build something or create something similar, but darker. <laughs> I have to say that uh, I really enjoy and appreciate uh, your comments and suggestions uh, that you've shared on the the previous uh, videos about this coach. It really, really helps, especially since this is our first time owning this Class A. And a lot of you have the similar RV and have great recommendations, and I really, really appreciate it. So keep them coming. And, uh, you know, the conversation, as always, is going to continue down in the comment section. So hope you like this update, and I will see you there. Take care.